an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now it's International Men's Day today. You may not have known that. And this afternoon, nope. Conservative MP, you do now, Philip Davis, will hold a debate in Parliament on men's issues to mark the occasion. His idea for a debate didn't meet with universal approval when he suggested it a few weeks ago. But is he right that men's issues need to be debated? Ellie went out with our oh-so-scientific mood box to ask who has their issues taken more seriously, men or women? As Oscar Wilde apparently once said, how can a woman be expected to be happy with a man who insists on treating her as if she were a perfectly normal human being? Not sure about that, but the question we are asking today is who has their issues taken more seriously? Men or women? This is a man's word! You can't be serious about that question. Of course, men's issues are taken far more seriously. Men shout a bit louder, perhaps? But uh, they say it's a men's world. I'm afraid it probably still is. Politically, women's issues are more important right now because they've been less important in the past. <laughs> Put it in the women, why? Well, because I think we talk a lot about women issues these days, right? So, but then we don't talk anymore about men issues. I don't even know what a men issue is, but we never hear about it. Men's. Yeah, uh, men's well, yeah. Why do you think that is? Um, there's more men there to represent themselves. They don't need to think about the women. Um, God, put in the spot. Uh. Man made the electrolyte! Well, it's always been a man's world, and I don't think it's changed as much as it should have done. It's usually men's issues, but women have a say, and they have a better say. Usually, women are the strongest people in relationships than anybody else. I couldn't possibly comment. Here's a ball. Man's Thank you. Man's world. Tomorrow is World Toilet Day. And so the provision of sort of wealth of toilets for women is far worse than it is for men. The issue that affects men and women. Case in point. Is this why I do this? You do that. There you you go. Tell me why you're putting it in there. Um, we don't have a men's minister. We have a women's minister. Women's issues are often taken far more seriously in the world, in politics, uh, than uh, men's issues are. There's things like the. Um tampon tax was a bit kind of lame and they've voted to keep it so and also I think that men are still more prominent in politics as well which I think is why you know that man makes money correctly women's issues get more attention thank you this is a man's world. well the umbrellas are out for those who remembered them because it's raining men's issues a woman on a girl. Joining us now is the Conservative MP, Philip Davis. Welcome back to Hi. The Daily Politics. Well, you saw the result of our scientific mood box. <laughs> Men have their issues taken more seriously. Well, I don't think they do in Parliament, to be perfectly honest. I mean, I accept there are more men than women in the House of Commons. There are a lot well, more men than well, women. That's, well, that's very different from the consideration of men's issues. And the, 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 some of the issues that I want to talk about in the debate today, about male suicide, mm. about the underachievement of boys in school, the health issues like testicular cancer, they get um, very underreported, the male victims of domestic violence. These are very rarely debated in Parliament. But very why not? Why debated. don't men like you raise them, then? If you feel they're so important, you have plenty of opportunities. As you say, they are critically important issues on uh, suicide particularly um, but you have health questions you have work and pensions questions you have business questions and as I say there are 459 of you to raise it yeah but as you, as you well know it's it's not as easy as just standing up at health questions and asking a question you've got to go into a ballot and you've got to uh, get the you know, it's got the questions got to come out of the of the hat so to speak so it's not that easy whereas for example every month in Parliament we have women and equalities questions um, which, which means that all of the issues affecting women can be raised as a specific session. Right. It doesn't apply, it doesn't apply to men. If it was just an equality session, then we could raise all of the issues that where men and women are, feel poorly let down. But in the House of Commons, we only have women and equalities questions. Well, Joan Bakewell, do you applaud Philip Davis for this? Well, I'm rather touched, actually, that men are beginning to feel squeezed because it does indicate <laughs> that women are getting slightly larger voices than they've ever heard. Um, and, of course, there are, so, there are not very many of them comparatively in the, in the Commons. So one does, one's heart bleeds for them. However, there are issues, there, and there are lots of issues that aren't gender specific. And I think we should be looking at the world 
to solve the issues of uh, health uh, under which banner testicular cancer comes along, but it shouldn't be specifically seen as a male issue. Women should care about it as much, just as women should care about the fact that in prisons, <coughs> primarily men, a big male issue, while the prison's full of men and not so much of women, we should all care about these issues and they shouldn't be gender-defined. Does it need an International Men's Day to do it? Well, let them have a bit of fun. Well, I, I absolutely agree. I mean, these are, I, I don't accept that only women are interested in women's issues and only men are interested in men's issues. I think that's very simplistic because m most, most women have, uh, they might have a husband or they've got a son or they've got a father. So they are, they are affected by all of these issues as well. And so I, I very much agree that we should look at these things in the round. My point is that we very rarely discuss these issues in right. the House well, of Commons. Let, but let's find out why. First of all, let's welcome our viewers in Scotland. They have just joined us after half past 12. They've been watching First Minister's questions. Welcome to Scottish viewers. But we talked about the number of MPs and the opportunities you do have to raise it. I mean, out of 650, only 191 are women. And, you know, 45 years after the Equal Pay Act was introduced, men still earn nearly 15% more than women. Just 26% of FTSE 100 directors are women, falling to just 90 in the FTSE 250. I mean, when you look at those sorts of facts, men aren't doing too badly, are they? But, that, but that's irrelevant to the point I'm making today. Why? Why is it irrelevant? Just, well, because I'm not talking about... I, my debate here isn't about the representation of men and women in Parliament or how many men and women happen to be on the boards. And, and as it happens, I don't, care, I don't care if every MP's a woman, as long as they're there on merit. I don't, I, I'm not interested in that. It, I'm saying that there are lots of issues that p specifically t affect men that I'm raising today in this debate that never get discussed in Parliament. And if International Men's Day, I'd rather we didn't have International Men's Day or International Women's Day for that matter, that it wasn't actually necessary. What sort but of it has given an opportunity to raise the voice of some of these people. And I've had lots of people emailing me to say, you know, thank goodness somebody's speaking up for me. I've never felt that before in the House of Commons. And that's what Parliament's for. What sort of turnout do you think will be required to make this a success? Oh, look, I don't know. It's, there's no votes in Parliament today and lots of people clear off back to their constituents early. So I, I don't know. What's important to me is that the issues will be raised, a minister will be there to respond to them, and I hope lots of people out in the country will feel that somebody's speaking up for them. All right. so that's what I mean, Parliament's all about. Joe Bate, well, when we had Philip Davis on about this uh, a little while ago, Jess Phillips, the Labour MP, opposed the idea of a debate and she accused Philip Davis here of putting in a mealy-mouthed, well, the girls get one sort of request. Was she unfair? Well, I think that the whole issue is the way you express it is it's to do with the way Parliament operates and the way the Commons is organised. It's nothing to do with out there in the country. It's because you don't get your say in the health debate. And that's up to the men in, in the Commons to insist that the issues that you care about are raised. Get a grip on it. You've got a huge majority. You're failing your well, own, that's your own right. gender. But we, we sort of have this politically correct sort of world where everybody feels they've got to speak up for sort of minority interests and the majority feel that they they can't speak up for themselves because they'll be... Well, but, but it's very rare that these things are actually debated. For whatever reason, it's this sort of culture of political correctness. Is, it, is that, that people, what, is that's what holding you back? I political so, correctness? Yes. I absolutely believe that. People think people, people in the Commons, the men as well, right. feel sort of they've got to be speaking up for the sort of minority causes. Is that, is that the case, John? Well, are the majority well, of men feeling held back by political correctness? I don't... I, I, men are being held back by women. I don't, I don't live that life. I don't know about it. Uh, I don't think they do. I, I think Come it's to time to have specific subjects raised, but to identify them as uh, male-specific issues it, is to, it's flying in the face of really the way the world works now. We're all citizens. We're all voters. Some of us are legislators, and we want to debate issues that affect everyone. Right, I mean, the University of York cancelled its plans to mark International Men's Day after a backlash among students. Who are you more angry with? The people who protested or the university for rolling over? Oh, well, you know, look, universities are full of politically correct lunatics, oh, really, well, aren't except, they? Well, so except they wanted to we mark all of these things. They wanted we to get mark all of these things, Wednesday. you know, I, all of these sort of uh, protests and whatever that go on in universities, you know, I, I'm not really concerned about that. What I'm concerned about well, is that you these... Except you want support for your international I want Wednesday. these issues that are going to be raised today about male suicide, the high proponents of male suicide as key, a key part of this debate, to be raised in Parliament and taken seriously, and whether the University of York students want to protest about it, agree with it, or whatever is a matter for them. What's important is the real victims of some of these things that never get a voice in Parliament. Will you raise the issue of male, of, of male men in prisons? Because yes, that, that's absolutely. A really, that is a really important uh, issue. Absolutely. Are you going to add that to your I, list? I certainly am going to raise about the unfairness of that men are treated much more harshly in the sentencing system. We don't want more women, women in prison to bring about equality. We, though, I was going we? to say, that, is do. that something you're sort of going to be calling We certainly for? do. All right, Philip Davis, thank you. I've been getting away with it.